Welcome to the Have More Fun Podcast. In this episode, I talk with my mom and her friend Jody about how to find a best friend. My brother Charlie gives me a hard time for not calling him more often, and we tell lots of personal stories about growing up with friends who are like family, because our moms decided it was so. There's the guy who sister froze his underwear and so it's <laughs> You tell that to the mops group. Yeah. It's they hard think to she's believe. all precious and sweet. I oh, so oh, my no, Mickey no. Mouse underwears together, man. Froze them. Just act natural. You know, mom's gonna try and like. Um. So. Like. So you can. Uh, you, can you have to act natural. So- That's like, three, that's like three times. I know, that's pretty good, actually. Is that? Sunshine, blue skies. I gotta cry. The minute's supposed to cry. We have a term in our family called sister courage, and it started when my girls were little and needed a little extra fortitude. One of them would say, I need sister courage, which means I need you to come with me. I need you by my side. And what I have learned over the years is that at various points in our lives, we all need a sister courage. We need another woman to simply stand next to us, to show up and fortify us with her presence, to hug us and remind us that together we've got this. My mom has a best friend who we call Uncle Jody. Yes, she is a woman, and yes, we call her uncle. We also call her other names that you may hear in this episode that aren't appropriate to explain where they came from. But over the years, my mom and Jody have shown me firsthand the meaning of friendship and sister courage. They have walked beside one another through more light and darkness than either of them could have imagined possible when they first met. During high school, my brother lived with Jody and her saint of a husband, Tom, when my parents moved out of state during his senior year. When my dad died, Jody invited my mom to live at their house for over a year while she picked up the pieces of her life. Jody's house is the one I would go to when I needed a place to crash for long weekends during college, and Joe and I were married in Jody and Tom's backyard. My mom shows up for Jody as well. Whenever Jody's having a party, my mom is her wing woman, helping her decorate and cook. They celebrate their birthday weekends together, floating in the pool. My mom cries and prays ferocious prayers with Jody when hard and scary things happen in the lives of Jody's kids. And my brother and I, along with Jody's kids, have all come to feel that we are family because we have walked through every life experience together. What I have learned from my mom and Jody is to be honest even when it's dark, to accept help when it's embarrassing, and to never take myself too seriously. Both mom and Jody are masterful at all of this. And the way they have given one another courage just by showing up for each other and the people around them makes me so grateful to be part of their legacy of love. The next conversation you're about to hear is so special to me because it has some of the most important people in my life in it, my real life family. Sometimes on this podcast, I get to talk with people who have mind-blowing theories about life. This episode is about the mind-blowing power of what happens over the course of a real, lifelong, tried and true friendship, and it has nothing to do with theory. We recorded this episode sitting on the floor of Jody's bedroom a few days before Thanksgiving. My brother Charlie joined me because we both feel so deeply the impact of mom and Jody's friendship that we wanted to dissect it and see if we could figure out how to replicate the magic. Hilarity ensued as we recorded late into the night, but some of those stories don't make it into this podcast because they are stories that are meant to be kept sacred, held close and put in the vault of shared family moments that you had to be there to appreciate. This weekend is Jody's birthday. Her kids and family will gather to celebrate the amazing person she is. And while we won't be there to celebrate, Jody, we, me and Joe and Joseph and Ellie and Charlotte, want you to know that your love, courage, glamour, and fun have made us better human beings. The way you love people is breathtaking. And you and Tom have set the standard of friendship for us all. And so without further ado, here is my mom, Cindy, and her best friend, who is also like a second mother to me, Jody, and of course, my hilarious brother, Charlie. Okay. I should have told mom what we were doing. He'll probably be pounding on the door. <laughs> He's ready to come in. He needs to come in and go take a nap. <laughs> Do you want to go tell him? 
No. Let's just start it. If he comes in, it's even better. Okay, so we're sitting around Mom's kitchen table last time we were in town and having this conversation, and Charlie was bringing up the idea of how so few people have um, this network of true friends. True friends. And he was using you guys as an example of what we want to be and the kind of friends we want to have and how well you guys have modeled that for us. And so, Charlie, what does that kind of friend look like to you? Well, the the basic discussion was how you don't see a ton of true friendships anymore, right? So, like like our parents have. So, who is uh, Jody for you, right? So, who is Cindy for for Jody or for like Cameron or her generation? So, the the basic discussion was you just don't see that type of stuff anymore, or um, the sincerity or how genuine the friendships are. So we we're the basic discussion was why does that exist? Why are those friendships so few and far between? Is it a generational thing? Is it a society thing? And I don't think any big conclusions were were settled with that. So so we need your wisdom. To we all had our us. input, but we don't really know what well, the truth is. Uh, I just want to say that Jody made me be her friend. <laughs> it's and true. Maybe that's the secret. Just Have make, someone make forced people on you. forced friendship. Well, we moved out to California <clears throat> in 1991, and um, uh, Charlie and Jody's son Tommy became good friends playing football, and Jody's husband Tom and my husband Chuck became good friends pa- playing uh, coaching. Okay. Yeah. And um, I can remember one day Jody called, and I'm not really a very outgoing person, and she was all bubbly and just wanting to include us in everything. And and she called up and she goes, Cindy, uh, Tom and Chuck are just going to be the best of friends. I know that, and so I think we should be friends too. And I got off the phone, and I'm like, that woman scares me. <laughs> I am afraid of her. I don't know if I want to be her friend. And still to this day, you, she I scares think. you. And <laughs> well, I think, um, yes, I did make you be my friend. Wasn't it a good thing? I, it was a very good thing. I think when I think about this, and this is what I've always tried to tell my kids, and I think I've said, I know I've said it to you guys, that you have to be a friend to have a friend. Yeah. And it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am kind of the, I'll say I'm kind of the glue in our family Mm -hmm. that with my brothers, my sisters, my um, nephews and nieces, I'm the one that's reaching out. And nowadays it's so easy with texting or Facebook even, like right. I can just text a message to one of my nephews just saying, just thinking of you, hope you're doing well, I love you so much. But, but, to, but, I, but I honestly think it takes a lot of work to have a friend. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of work to be a friend. I still have friends that I've known since I was three years old because I think it's because you cre- you, it just becomes important to you. It's important to me. And it's important to me that people are happy. And I just think that like we were talking about a little while ago, I think, you know, it's just so much easier to be a nice person than to not yeah. be a nice person. And I'm going to probably cry because I always she's do. A, she's, <laughs> our, <laughs> she's our friend crier. I'm the she, crier. She, she's I'm the crier. crier. But I, I honestly think you have to put a lot of work into it. It's like, you know, you're, you're like if you're a young mom, you're overworked, you're tired, you may have a job, you may work out of the house, you may not work out of the house. It doesn't matter. You're tired. And you have so many people pulling at you all the time. But um, if you can take two minutes to send a text message to a friend, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs in laundry, but I just was thinking about you. Mm-hmm. You know what? Look what it does to the other person. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing. Did you, do you think like, because obviously growing up, I had very, very close friends. And obviously growing up in the small town, like it was – you know, friendships were very tight knit. And I, I always considered myself like really, really lucky with my friends. Mm-hmm. And I always, you know, even Lacey, I tell her like how lucky I was with my friends. And then it's like, as you grow up, there's those, you know, everybody kind of separates and people have family. So did you guys in your lives have that lull of 
of between like your growing up friends yeah like not even that but just like through stages of life where maybe you just didn't feel like you had that connection to like friends or like i know this is one thing we talked about no matter what every time we show up here i think me and joe have talked about it like the anthony's are always the same like it is a constant right like chaos (laughs) <laughs> no, it's yeah, but it's it's great. Like <clears throat> I wrote I have started writing and I so I wrote a paper like or an essay or a blog post whatever you want to call it, but it's like me and Tommy, we shake hands and then we immediately start talking trash to each other or make fun of Cameron or like, you know, Jody's got us all doing stuff. You know, Tom's <laughs> usually asleep or wakes up, which 100% he was asleep when we showed up today, right? Like it's yeah. the same constant, like there's food cooking and it's it's that constant that no matter what, we could have not seen each other for a month or six months or a year, but it's, it will always be the same. So it seems like you guys have such a close friendship now that you're older with all like the eddies and stuff like that. But when you were in your thirties, early thirties, late thirties, early forties, did you have that group? I think we did. Maybe it was like the the sport. Cause I always remember like pickles, mom, you know, like Barb and like maybe it was a sports thing. And I've known her since I was 12 years old. Right. (laughs) So, you know, is it an activity thing? Do you guys find friends through, like, well, mutual... Well, I think because you're... I honestly think that um, you cultivate your friends mostly through your children because it's who they're going to school with, who are they going home to play with. And you, and then usually the husbands was just like us, you know, was the, our husbands, our kids. That's how we became friends. And I think that's typically how you... When you go through the stages of life, that that's how you find your friends. And then when you find yourself retired... And um, then what? Where are your friends? You move to, you, let's right. say you downsize. You move to a smaller home. But you're moving to a new neighborhood where you don't know anybody, perhaps. Right. I, I can't say enough about these over 55 communities because people think, some people think that you go there to die. Yeah. But if you've ever have been to one of these over in 55, I have a lot of friends who've moved to them. They are so busy. They yeah. are so active. There's so many activities. And when you move there, everybody's in the same in the same pot. They don't know anybody. Right. So everybody reaches out to everybody. So when you go through the stages of life, who you're around, who you're surrounding yourself with, and if your husbands can be good friends, if the wives and the husbands can be good friends through the children, you're going to be going to those soccer games yeah. together and then going to have pizza afterwards. or And you just develop, whoever has a swimming pool, you end up at their house. You know, it's it's just, that's kind of the way it is there. But then that's, following that comes into play that you got to be a friend to have a friend you know then comes the work sometimes Mm -hmm. well i know like even with you at the murray's i mean but you'll go back there and you guys pick up Mm -hmm. like it's you never left high school almost you know i mean you guys are out pounding beers so (laughs) true or false (laughs) absolutely true True. all night Mm -hmm. long it's the only time she ever has beer right right right, obviously so there's this whole term called family which i of course, that's the Anthony's to me. It's friends who are absolutely more like family. And my kids call you Uncle Jody and Uncle Tom. Mm-hmm. And um, how does that happen? How do you have friendships where they feel more like family than friends? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I want to say Jody's very good at being intentional, um, of at being a friend. And um, I think that's why... You know, we've been friends for so long, and how she's maintained friendships with people from years ago. Since I was she's three years old. She's very intentional in being in contact with people. But um, I, I, we, we were talking about this just with our friend Penny passing away. Um, we, we've done life together. We've done marriages. We've done birth. We've done death. We do life together, and we stick by each other, and we're there to support each other. And it's just this beautiful mix of celebration, of sharing sorrow, and and um, we we just do life together. You know the the good times, the bad times, and we're all there for each other. But I I think what Jody's saying is about you, you, if you want a friend, you got to be a friend. It's being intentional, and. Um, I think that's probably a pretty good point because, I mean, it doesn't seem like anybody really wants to be around for the bad times. And mm-hmm. I think that's, uh, like, we only live in the good times, right, through social media and, like, everything's good. And, yeah. But uh, do you see a, a gap? Like, do you see 
if you look at like our generation, do you see those same types of qualities in people? Well, I think, well, like we were talking about a little bit a while ago, it's so easy on social media to hide behind it and to say negative and not nice things about people that you don't even know. Sure. But I remember when my daughter was growing up, she's 31 now, when Cameron was growing up, I used to always say to her, don't ever say something about somebody that you couldn't say unless they were standing right there in front of you. You know, the old Jiminy Cricket mm -hmm. on your shoulder thing, because that's what my mother did to me. Don't, Jody Sue, don't you say anything that's, you know, that it's someone, you could hurt somebody's feelings. If you can say it without, if, if you could say it with them being there, then you can say it. Otherwise, you don't. And I think that's what it is with friends. Like, we need to lift each other up. We need to be positive. We need to say positive things to each other. Everybody needs to hear yeah, positive things. Everybody yeah. needs to hear positive things and to be, there needs to be more positivity in our lives. Wow. And it starts with you. It starts oh, with I each know. of us. <laughs> See, the chaotic family is intruding on our... This I, couldn't be any more. <laughs> I, I think um, about some times where um, we have this little solid group of friends that um, we meet and... What do you call, we, what do you call yourself? We call ourselves the Eddies <laughs> and we're named I after a crazy guy, friend's cat. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, I think the beauty of it is that we, because we're so close and we know each other, we can sense when somebody's not in a particular good place. I can remember at one time Joe was not in a good place. And so we just decided that we were, instead of meeting without her, we were all going to drive out here <laughs> to be with her and show up at her door. I was too, I was in too much sorrow to get the car and drive. Hmm. <laughs> what happens next? I hear these crazy women at my front door singing to me. <laughs> what were you singing? I can't even we remember. Love you, Jody. Who <laughs> <Aww. laughs> was trying oh to nail it the gosh. most, Cindy? Was Cindy she trying to nail it the most? Oh, yeah, she Mariah. sings the best. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. You, you're right. You just lift each other up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when mom and dad moved across the country, Charlie's senior year of school, junior year? Um, I lived with them second half of my junior year or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then your senior year. I think starting me and, uh, yeah. um, Bubba. Um, Oh, that's what I was doing the show. We had so many we bedrooms. Quite the, uh... <laughs> Whenever there was some an empty bedroom, I would say, "Shh, don't tell anybody," because yeah. it would get filled up. That's so right. We had a lot of the high school kids because of the military families moving mm. yep. move in with us. Well, I, that's fun. another uh, my other really good buddy, Mike Arns. Um, so my parents let me um, move back to California, and so the first half of my junior year, I lived with Mikey and his mom. Um, and then going into my senior year, moved in with the Anthony's. So, mm -hmm. but that's again, like Mikey's another prime example, like Chrissy and Mikey and those guys mm -hmm. are just, it's just those, those friendships. I mean, the, my parents trusted them to let me basically live across the country with them and to take care of me. So obviously those are, those are pretty strong friendships. Well, one thing that I have just so appreciated is that um, in so many ways, I feel like you just told us that we are all family. And so yeah. that made it so. Yeah. And yeah. that has been uh, such a huge gift to us as kids mm -hmm. um, to not wa to watch not only your friendship, but to include us in on it wow. as a model. And I think the bar is set so high. Now we have really high expectations for. I think something that life. always comes to my mind is my dad used to always say to us, um, you wake up every morning, you say it's going to be the best day ever, you get up and you get it done. My dad lived life that way. Mm -hmm. I think he was the original Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> he loved adventure, but and he loved fun. But, you know, it just goes back to make somebody's day brighter. If you're standing mm -hmm. in line at the grocery store, say something nice to somebody. Pay for somebody's stuff behind you. I accidentally cut off a lady going into Starbucks one day in my car. It was kind of, it was a weird situation, but I felt like she was mad at me and I was a little upset that I, I didn't do anything intentional. So I paid for her order and um, 
it was hilarious because as I pulled out, I had to do something and she went by, she rolled down her window and she said, thank you. You know, she was very, she just really appreciated it because she was mad at me. <laughs> and I can't stand to think that somebody's <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> but it's so easy to be nice to somebody. I mean, you know, that say compliment them. I mean, don't, don't do it insincerely. Sure, but, yeah. You know. I think with social media, I don't know if people have become gun shy or, you know, it's this you know, how much do you put out there? But it's, there's also this, um, like, everybody's so nice, you know, sometimes it's like, people don't take it for what it is, you know, that sincere, just generosity or kindness. And I just, I I don't know. Like they have an agenda. They're doing it for a reason. I think we've become jaded, you know, a little bit with that. Like, why are you trying to friend? Like, why are you trying to befriend me? Like, why would she tell you, like, you're going to be my friend, like your husband's, our husband's are friends. So we're going to be friends too. Like, nowadays it's like people have some walls up you know and we've become a little bit like skeptical about that type of thing i mean i think with 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 guys i mean i've had buddies that i thought were buddies do some really like bad things to me and i'm like a guy would never like we just would never do that but now it's i'm like maybe they didn't have friends like i had growing up but that would have never you know that Mm -hmm. would have never flown Mm -hmm. But um, so I'm always curious as to like why what like I don't I don't always understand and where the big difference is. Well, I think part of it too, and we <clears throat> and we were talking about this not long ago, Tom and I, and that is that your generation still grew up with the morals and the and the uh, the morals and the, the freedom, freedom to, the, to enjoy adventure, to have fun. But the morals, I mean, there were rules and there was respect, yeah. probably respect I think is that's the a biggest good word. word. That's a really good word. And I think kind of after you, you're 37, Seven. <clears throat> after you. But just, I look 12. Yes, we know. <laughs> so do I. Cry. Super hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, that growing up, and I look at my husband, Tom, who grew up in such a very, very small coal mining town. Mm-hmm. His father was an orphan. His father picked coal. His father worked in the coal mines. Um, and yet, it, you know, the values of everything were the most important thing. Telling the truth, yeah. being respectful to everyone, to your elders, to your mm-hmm. family, you know, everyone in town. Because sure. as Tom said, if he did anything wrong, his mom knew about it before he got back home. Yeah. And boy, did he get it. But, yeah. But... Where are the morals? Where's the the family unit? You know, that's you another need, thing too. It's maybe, the family unit. You know, you need... dinners together, that type of mm-hmm. thing. You work yeah. longer days. I mean, I don't yeah. get home till seven thirty, eight o'clock every night. Like, and as you were a child growing up, you had dinner you with had the dinner. family every night. So did we. Do you guys do? Dinner? And you always sat in the same place yeah, on the table. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had your spot. So cloud aside to you. But I think that there's a breakdown in the family in that manner. I think we are living very. Um, uh, drive through lives. Yeah. Drive through the food place. Give your kids this. Give your kids that. We're so, we're so it's, it's easier. so hectic. I just read a study and it was talking about how in 1960 the average dinner time was 90 minutes, and today the average dinner time is 12 minutes. Yeah. And I think that really kind of summarizes the state. Yeah. Right. Of, yeah. And I love this idea. I hear of families, young families. They say. No cell phones at the table. No cell phones uh-huh. between the hours of five and nine, or whatever it is. I mean, like whatever rules fit for your family. And yeah, if you're playing sports and you're driving kids here and there, well, that's what the crock pot was invented right. for, mm-hmm. you know. And um, you you need to take that time. Everyone needs to have that time together to bond as a unit and to, you know, how was your day? I mean, I'm still so close to my siblings, and I'm the one that calls them all the time. I have my babysitting my brother's How come dog. You never for a call me, months? by the way. I call and I text, and if we want to have another podcast about how <laughs> you are at answering calls and answering text messages, how often that do you could call go. Me? How many calls am I missing? Well, I, I just missing? you broke me down, like you wore me down with not oh, answering ever. So I was like, it. well, my so you were like, you were like calling me weekly. No, my my feelings and were then hurt, it was like, and then I backed down because I, I was sick of the, the emotional. Point. You have to persevere, Charlie. That's right. I, I think they need an intervention, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here I am. Here, here we go. <laughs> how often do you call me? <laughs> so I bet I you last week. The yeah. first week of the month, it's your responsibility to call her. The second week of the month, it's her responsibility to call you done i call her and give her advice on um being the ceo of mops he refuses to let me use the hashtag 
Hashtag, lady boss. Hashtag girl boss. Hashtag lady boss. Um, you should talk about this. You should talk about that. He does give me you know tips what's on interesting about that. about that, what you guys are talking about, is that like we just like we always had assigned seating at the table, at the dinner table, so did we have assigned like the way we treat each other. Now, Mandy, you're her, his older sister, but still to him, you're just still his sister. Totally. It's hard for him to accept that you are you know, a creator that is in a position, a beautiful position to affect so many lives. But so is Charlie with what he does, you know, the entrepreneur Mm -hmm. that Charlie is. But still, you guys, the banter is still the same as if you were 12 and, Which is great. you know, 15 yeah. years old. It's a reality check always, you know, because yeah. it's like, oh, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm, it so. is a reality You're check. You're nobody still. <laughs> and I'm with my brother, You're Chris. just the guy who sister froze his underwear and sewed them together. <laughs> <See? right? laughs> you tell that to the mops group? Yeah. <laughs> It's they think she's all precious and sweet. I know. So oh, my no, Mickey no. Mouse underwears together, man. <laughs> Throws them. <laughs> but that's okay. it. Like you one still of your you friends. go on to yeah. life with these same yeah. um, relationships, and it's it's precious mm-hmm. though. Totally. We were just talking about a story with Tommy where I kicked him in the balls. Oh, yeah. A long time ago, and I still feel bad about it. Oh, Delmar, Delmar, Delmar Beach. Delmar Beach. Yeah. Yeah. The Delmar Beach that. incident. Yeah. My, our time, my time. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. still remembers in the field. We just talked was about it. Was he giving it. you a bad time or something? We were messing around, and I went to kick him, but I accidentally, like, nailed him oh. in the balls. It dropped him, and he sat in the water for a good 10 minutes. He's like, <laughs> getting still, pelted by the waves. I still have guilt about it. <laughs> well, he has two beautiful children. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's all good. It's all good. You needn't worry anymore. I can let go of my guilt about yeah, it. you need not worry anymore about it. <laughs> so, in talking about stories that kind of stick with us, is there a story or a moment that kind of like for each of you epitomizes your friendship or the family friendship? Well, I, I I think some of the best times that we've had are when we worked in the same building <laughs> and we would go into the lavatory together and we'd, we'd sit. Lavatory. <laughs> Laboratory. We're we're over sixty. We're still oh, gotta be we're still polite. So we would, laboratory. we would go into the laboratory together and there were it was a two Airplane. staller and we would sit there for the longest time sharing stories and I can remember so many things happened in that bathroom. And I remember once where Jody told me that there was a warrant out for her arrest. <laughs> so we're sitting there, I go, Well, so guess what happened to me today? Yeah. So I go, Well, I guess there's a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> That's when we decided that we were going to do a screenplay called Potty Talk. So be on the lookout for it yes. because it's in the works. Super where we, gross. Different stages of our lives were, were discussed. Wearing in the different, toilet. yes, wearing different uh, shoes, reflecting the. Um, what oh, about yeah, like early yeah, on yeah. when you guys were? Because that's Wait, like. Let's just clarify. I wasn't arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure. It was because my dog walked on someone else's property. Oh seriously. my god! Was that Luke? That's yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a serious thing. So, what were you gonna say, Charlie? Like, what about a um, like a, a moment or a story when you guys were first friends? Because that's. That's way down the road. Oh, I probably friendship. have one. I became very ill right after we had been became friends, and it was very touching to me that um, that your family came over and you brought dinners and you just sat with me, and it was very touching. <laughs> Didn't my mom wash your hair? Yes. In Cameron's bathroom. Yep. She washed my hair. I mean, that's a friend. Right? Yeah. I don't know if anybody's washing my hair right now. I could barely get Lacey to wash my hair. <laughs> No, I mean, that's... that's Tommy, wash my hair, man. (laughs) When you're in a time of of need or whatever, and your friend is there, and it's hard because you don't know. It's just like we just went through the passing of one of our dear friends, and we didn't know what to do. What what should we do? What I did, because I didn't want to send her a message every day. I didn't want to call her every day and say, are you okay? Are you okay? Nobody wants to be asked all day long when they're not well. Are you okay? So I would send, I would text message to her, Almost every day, a silly little joke, like, you know, the, you know, the kind like wipe the chicken across the road. You know what I mean? Just really silly ones. She Dad loved jokes. it because she had all these little grandchildren and she would pass them on to them. But it, she knew I was thinking of her yeah. mm-hmm. and I and I wasn't bothering her. Mm-hmm. And we've since lost her. But 
But you knew as a friend what to do. You didn't have like you knew what. Or was I think so be. often you like don't do anything. Yeah, because you don't, don't want to make do. the wrong. Exactly. You're scared of making the wrong yeah. choice. Like, yeah. should I say something? Should I not say something? Yeah. Should I go see her? Should I not go see her? Yeah. And then, yeah, it's either you do or you don't, and it's you're gonna have to live with that decision. You know, if you didn't go see her and then she passed, like, yeah, you but know we, that. We determined that we were gonna let her know that we were always. Yeah. I don't think that was ever Well, that is something we did. As a matter of fact, our little group, we each took a day. And that was, I had already been doing the joke things, but we each took a day that we were responsible for sending her a letter or a phone call or flower. Anything we wanted to do it was our day. We each had a day of the week that we would do something that she would know we were thinking of her. Mm-hmm. That was cool. And the other thing we did, tell them about the hearts. Oh, we just wanted Penny to know that we loved her and we cherished her and we were carrying her close to our hearts. And so we cut out these cloth um, hearts out of a really pretty fabric and we wrote her name on it and we each carried that heart inside our bras um, just to keep her close to our hearts. And we told her that we were doing that just to that let her know sweet. how much we loved her. Who do you think is uh, more in charge of... <laughs> establishing these families men or women the husband or the wife i think women women have more men haven't really i think it might be changing over the last number of years but it seems to me like men don't really have the permission to talk to each other the way women do and um and women women forge the bonds i mean really if you go back look at the beginning of time women have always i believe been really the strength of of who we are as people. So I would say women, but that's my opinion. You think, think it's easier it. for the girls to the make... Women, their wives tell well, them do you, totally, do you think it's easier for women to make friends than guys? Yes. I mean, I I'm not a guy, I don't genuine know. Genuine friends, but... not acquaintances where it's I'm like, oh, sure. hey, like, no, oh, little I'm Jimmy's not... in kindergarten together. We well, should I think the coffee, genuine like... thing goes back again to... Right. You have to put... You, it's, a mar- it's like a marriage, you know? You have to work mm-hmm. at it every day. It, it doesn't. It's yeah, I mean, relationships I don't know aren't easy. Like people are willing Marriages to Marriages are not easy. I sure. Mean, I'm blessed because I'm married to the most amazing man in the world, who's allowed me to be me. He's allowed me to blossom and be the silly person that I can be. But a relationship is Tom. Here's what Tom always says: a relationship isn't fifty-fifty. It's eighty-twenty. It's eighty give, twenty take. And if we both think we're giving eighty and taking twenty, well, guess what? There's a real great relationship mm-hmm. going on right there. So the same could be said for friendships. Absolutely. I think so. Hmm. That's good. One last question for each of you. What's the best advice you never got? Oh. I feel like you should have prepped them for that. I know. I might actually have one more follow-up question, too. Well, I, here's, this is a real personal one. I've always struggled with my weight. And I think if, and now I'm 64 years old and my birthday suit don't fit no more. <laughs> because my weight is down right now. <laughs> You've so, outgrown your birthday suit. And, <laughs> I'm not, well, I'm always wearing my birthday suit, but anyway. <laughs> no, but I, I remember I said to, to, I said to my daughter just a while ago, I said, try and keep your weight always the same I said to her not to be obsessed about what you look like or anything but for health reasons I thought you know if you get on the scale every day and if you're one pound over then you need to make sure that you do something about it don't let it become two pounds over because then you get to be my age and your birthday suit just doesn't fit no more <laughs> it's a silly piece of advice but I think no, my, mom yeah. but my mom was always very thin so it never even occurred to her I'm sure Nope. No, that's I, good. You're preaching to the choir here. That's all. I'm all about that. Are you? Why are you looking at me, Charlie? You haven't been to the gym in a very, <laughs> very, very long time. <laughs> Your mom looks amazing. That's. Your mom. You can looks look amazing. amazing and not be a healthy person. No one ever oh thinks my gosh. we look our age. Let's get into that. You do look no, very young. I, I have. I have an answer to your okay. question. So, I think the best advice I never got was that it's okay to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. That it's okay to make mistakes. I think I grew up thinking that if you made a mistake, it was going to be the end of the world. And I can remember going to a a Franklin Covey, or I can't remember what it was, but they said, um, 
expect to make three big ones a year and it's okay you're it's going to be okay i think i wish that i had heard it's okay to make mistakes mm -hmm. um you know don't be so hard on yourself mm -hmm. you know you, you you're going to get a second chance don't just don't be so hard on yourself don't be afraid to to live life to make mistakes and it's not the end of the world it's not the end of the world i wish i knew that earlier it's an analogy to that is I never, I said I, I could sing, I was really, you know, I, could do, I had that talent, but I said, I can't draw, I cannot draw. And uh, an aunt said to me, of course you can. I said, no, I can't. She says, of course you can, because if you do it and you don't like it, you just paint over it again and you start over. There's no big deal. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And That's I went, good. oh, really? So I started painting and what do you know? I could paint, but I had myself convinced I couldn't, but I had the permission because it was like. I can just erase it. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the freedom to do, to do, to go, to move forward on mm -hmm. it. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is okay to make mistakes because right. we we learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Too bad we don't know at twenty what we now know in our sixties, yeah. right? Yeah. God, we'd be brilliant. I know. We'd <laughs> probably be really rich too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one follow up question, and then if you have a follow up question, you can. Um, Three just easy, practical tips for anyone listening who's like, I need some serious friends in my life, mm. and I'm going to take control over that, and I'm going to go and do something this week mm. to start yeah. that. Let's get it, Jody. What do you think? Tips on how to be – just keep going back to you have to be a friend to have a friend. I think you take the first step. You, you Let's say you're dropping off kids at school – or you're somebody at church or whatever, wherever you are in your life, and you say, hey, um, let's go grab a cup of coffee someday. And instead of just saying superficially, yeah, yeah, I'd like that, you you get out your, probably your smartphone, and you go, do you have this day available? And now that person's locked in. And they might be grumbling or whatever, but you know what, they're probably going to meet you. And if they call you and say they can't meet you, you say, that's okay. You know, send them another text just thinking about you. I mean, you don't want to be a stalker friend, but if you're talking about somebody you kind but of But it works for know, you guys. She, you, was you a stalker friend. But, but, but see, I'm so bossy. Yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> I'm the original. Yeah. No, but I think about my best friends. They all, like, Stalked said, you. Drea, I, yeah, yeah. she decided we were going to be friends, and I didn't have a choice yeah. in the matter. Yeah. Yeah. My friend Bridget, when I was growing up, decided we were going to be yeah. friends. Yeah. Everybody needs yeah. a jigger. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so reach out, reach ask somebody, out. Yeah. tell someone you're going to be friends and they don't have a choice. I think we're scared to reach out because we think we're going to be rejected. But what if you said, let's say you're dropping the kids off or something. I see my daughter doing this. She's, she's, a, she's a junior me in many ways. And you just, you see someone starting, like, oh, you know, the friend says something like, I don't know where to get, buy such and such for my child. Oh, I can help you with that. And, you know, you just reach out, start a conversation, and then maybe it carries on further. Hey, I'll take you. I'll show you. But I think next today, it's it's easy with the text messages, and the written letter has kind of gone out the window. I still love writing notes to nice people yeah, and, and a nice, nice handwritten letter. Yeah. Note. And I don't know. Maybe we need to start a maybe we need to start a cause of writing handwritten notes again. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they teach cursive anymore. I school. heard that they were. I asked some people the no, other day. And no, I, I heard they were taking out manuscript but they were teaching cursive isn't that right uh, of one of my kids learned cursive, cursive and the other two haven't yeah oh yeah it depends on Tommy the teacher just write cursive i always used, used to know so i'm like dude what's up with your cursive man he's he's a cursive he's writer a, he's has beautiful penmanship i don't know if it's beautiful but he's, he's just hitting up the cursive takes after solid. his mother <laughs> <laughs> i know i think when the, i know what comes to my mind is again like giving permission to do things i think um I think when, again, with the, like, painting or something, and you think you can't do it, but being given permission, give yourself permission to be a friend. Or more importantly, I think it's like my dad said, give yourself permission to be happy. Because I'm a happy person, and I know we're not all put together the same way, but we can be happy people if we try, if we don't dwell in the negative. I, mean, I think my issue for me personally is uh, like I had such good friends and have such good friends, like best friends, not on a daily basis, but like we would consider family, mm -hmm. like my, my best, best friends. 
that it's it's hard for me like there's such a high standard of friendship so it's kind of hard for me to like or it takes a while invest, to get there like i can i'm like how much time am i gonna invest like in trying to make this friendship work that's probably not going to ever live up to the standards of what i have so it's like mm. but you don't need to judge everybody that way you judge you you, you do it on a one on one not everybody's saying no one cindy and i sure i'm cindy, not saying it's i'm it's a fault you know it is it's not a it's not a, a a great character trait to just you know pretty much pass a, you know judgment on whether a friendship is going to work it's just hard for me to invest time on a personal level when it's like maybe it's just not going to i mean i can kind of tell it's like you know, how much That's, am i going to try to me, and force this i hear this and i hear dwelling in the negative Probably, why are you yeah. wor- why are you worrying about what your friendship will be like so- at some point out because you've been hurt because, because I, yeah, I, because you have a bunch of people who you thought were friends, and then they treat you like garbage, and it's but like you, I would rather invest my time back into my family or, or well, that, my business yeah. or you know doing something that's going to be productive versus investing time into something that's going to. So are suck. you afraid to make new friends then because you don't know where it's going to uh, go? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm scared, but it's hard to invest that time when it right. could be spent with kids or family you know what i'm saying so it's like maybe the priority like i view things a little bit differently you know where before it was like well what do i have to lose i don't have any kids i don't have a wife i don't you know i can invest some time in this dude and see if we can have some fun and create a bond but but is your like before when we were talking about you're going to create your friends with your basically with your family for sure. your children and so it's going to just happen naturally yeah I, I but you're not afraid of that right i'm not afraid of it okay. at all but mm-hmm. i do like you know i i was me and Lacey have this discussion all the time like and same with her like what friend does she have where she could just call up and like be a girl or you know like yeah. we always talk about how my best friends fill a void that my spouse can't right and mm-hmm. your spouse fills a void that mm-hmm. your best friend never could mm-hmm. so you need those friendships you need that balance in your life and so I mean, you have, you know, Andrea, I, but who would be your best friend that you, like, go to girl talk type thing? Andrea? Pro- yeah. And you guys are, like, polar opposites? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, but she's super far away. Like, who would you do that, you know, that you could go grab coffee with, like, on a couple times a week basis or whatever? But a phone call is as good as a cup of coffee. Yeah. I mean, me and Mikey talked on the phone the other day. I hadn't talked to him in a couple of months and it was like, we just pick up where mm-hmm. we left off. But I, you know, it's, I feel like it's just hard to find those, those new friendships on that same level. But also those friendships are. But I think you have to not worry about it. You have old? to those just are let it happen. 25 year old Yeah, don't worry about it. I would say don't worry about that. I think we have such a high expectation for friendship because we see all of this. Oh, 100%. Like, look what we've and been so exposed we have, to. So like, the friendship should be this. And if it's not, then it's, like, not a good friendship. So maybe we have to but create But it takes that. time for that to grow. Sure. Yeah. Like, your mom was scared to death of me in the beginning, right? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, right away we were going to Charger games. I mean, it was, like, it was on, you know? It but was see, just... that was your mom and your dad. Of course. See? So we had the parents were mm-hmm. all... And so, and I don't know if you even see that as much anymore. Like both parents being involved the same as as it kind of was. You know, I just I just think we're super I busy. I see Cameron and, and her. I see it with Cameron back there, but maybe that's I don't know. California thing. is kind of different than I think the East Coast. There's more still more small communities and you, you get know, that, that like Fallbrook. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. I I just think that we we just need to in, try to enjoy life, enjoy people the most mm-hmm. that we can. Mm-hmm. Um, don't take ourselves too seriously. Right. We we laugh a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can laugh at each other. We can laugh at ourselves. And um, I think a lot of times people just take things too seriously. Their feelings are hurt. Mm-hmm. We just you know just try to enjoy. And I I I think those friendships are going to come. You know, like Jody's saying, but just enjoy people, enjoy each other, and and laugh. I I was just out with some friends from my church group, who are all very serious, and I don't know what happened, but we just one of them was being very serious with me, like she was telling me, you know, I was really upset with that guy, and I looked at her, <laughs> I just started to. <laughs> Well, I said, that sounds so funny. I could not stop laughing. And then she started laughing. And we just 
You both peed your pants. Almost. <laughs> I, that's, I, I hey, said. We're talking about our I'm just issues. <laughs> I said I'm going Stay to. Fast. I am going to pee my pants if we don't stop. But it's just you know when you when you become friends with people, I don't know. There's you, you can joke at their seriousness, and that helps everybody. It just helps your emotional state. It mm-hmm. just helps so much. So just be real. Don't take each other so seriously and. And have fun. I mean, so. our family probably will be our family now. Like Tommy and Anna. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's true. And just, it's just like a generation. See, that's, yeah. CJ and that is the blessing like, that your mom yeah. and I, that we... It, that's what we pray about yeah. is that we're, you guys will just continue. Yeah, yeah, it's our legacy of love that will just continue on. And it's not really that hard. You know, it's just... Okay, so Charlie and I are going to summarize the lessons that we've learned. You convince tell someone that they're your friend <laughs> um laugh a lot reach out let people come over to your house and don't be embarrassed by your husband walking around in a bathrobe <laughs> and um a drunk drawer or it's just like welcome people into your house and like I just think with be that's real another, yeah when people show up with you if you present yourself the way you would be with your family when your friends come over, like mm-hmm. the house doesn't need to be spotless. Like we were talking mm-hmm. about how it's Jody 2.0. <laughs> yeah. But and you're like, no, I know I'm doing this. It's not like I've lost it. I, this is intentional. <laughs> but it's, you know, that's, it's real. It's like, who cares? You know, nothing's a big deal. Like we don't care. You know, you're not, no one has to impress us. So I think that when people see that you're letting your guard down, that probably lets them in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, lets you yeah. in. Another thing is declare that they're your family, and mm-hmm. it will be so, essentially, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, one thing that I remember is when I would come home or go to your house, uh, Jody, during college. It mm-hmm. was like my parents lived on the other side of the country, and if I needed to get away for the weekend, I was like, okay, I'm do going to Jiga's house yeah. to do laundry, do laundry, stay up late, watch movies yeah. with you and Cam, and yeah. have snacks. Eat and popcorn. It was like that's just what happened because that was home yeah. Kids at that in time college need to get away from school every now and then and that's really important i think you guys are radically honest with each other and you yeah. carry each other's burdens yeah when you don't and know joys. what else to do mm-hmm. yeah all of it and you've seen each other through hard things and amazing mm-hmm. things and showed up in the midst of grief and pain and all of it i think that's probably a big showing up is Showing yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. That um, does uh, that's how for me that's when it's it's on when somebody shows up. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think cultivating intimacy, like mom washing your hair mm-hmm. or just like it, it's those it, yeah. it's just really a yeah. unique thing, right? Yeah. Where you're like, yeah. I'm here yeah. for you and it's really profound. Um, what else? I I I think one thing that was a big lesson for me was when we met, we moved to Rochester, and I had this friend. She was a few years older than me. Um, and she again told me that I was going to be her friend. <laughs> so there's a pattern here. Annette. Yeah, that's a and she, of a she said, I want you to come to my house and have a cup of coffee. And I said, okay, I'll come in and have a cup of coffee. So I walked in her house. She said, I, I can tell that we're going to be good friends. I don't ever want to worry that you're going to come over and see my house at, 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 at its worst. So it's at its worst now. And she took me into every single room of the house. And she well showed... I have it, a twin? It, <laughs> it, was, it was a mess. And she said, now I don't have anything to worry about. You've already seen it. It's a hmm. mess. So she said, I just want to be able to enjoy it when you come over. And How I thought... Cool is she? That was like a... That was a profound thing for me. And that's profound too. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better. This is perfect. Oh my god. This is about what I was talking about. I was talking about how your family, you could sit there and fart and he doesn't even know it that we hear it. It's like no, the, the greatest best. thing ever. And then he just sit there and crank one and we're all like, dude. And he's just looking at us like, what? You heard that? You know, like yeah, man. With your dad with the two oh. of them were sitting oh, in, the, in the bar in our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> your dad. Ah, oh, so good. He just kept letting them rip. And 
I'm like, we're all oh. looking at each other like. There he goes, man. <laughs> in his white robe. Ah, you better be careful too. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> but I think <laughs> being able to. That's not a PG version. I think being able to open your home to people mm. for events, the sporting events. I mean, you don't have to have the biggest, most luxurious house. You just have to have a, a, home. a house with a heart. Mm -hmm. You know, because everyone makes do, Yep. you know, they figure out a way. And I think like, I remember Mandy talking about this, that, that I always said, when you're having people over and they say, can I bring something? You say yes, because not because you need them to, but because when they bring something, they feel involved, mm -hmm. they feel included yeah. and they are in the kitchen putting the final mm -hmm. touches on their salad or whatever it is, but they now feel like part of the, part of the Part of the group, mm -hmm. whatever group it may be, people love that. Yeah, that's a they girl. That's that. a total girl thing. You don't want to bring something. I don't want to bring anything, and if somebody comes to my house, I don't want them to bring anything. That's it's a like a guy thing. thing. Like, yeah. oh no, you don't yeah. need to bring anything to my house. I have everything that I could possibly ever need that <laughs> Lisey has to make. <laughs> yeah. See. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I. Yeah. Bring beer. Guys can mm. bring beers. I think you keep trying to tie this up, Mandy, and we, we, no. we keep... Is there a time constraint? Do you have somewhere to go? I just, it's been 52 minutes. Solid 52 minutes. That's good. Well, I feel honored that you have asked uh, me, you know, Cindy and I, to, to be here to do this. Here I go, I'll cry again. She's okay. <laughs> Damn, that's, like three, that's like three times. I know, that's pretty good, actually. Is that, <laughs> are you crying from ads, the rip you know? that just happened in there? Yeah. <laughs> tears, those are, yeah, those are real tears. <laughs> No, but it, I mean, there, it is so um, amazing to have a sister. And it's just like when we, oh, when we went through this, losing our friend, that was real sister courage. Mm -hmm. That was real sister courage. Mm -hmm. I was proud of us. I was proud of her children. But to have a dear friend is everything, you know? And I think when you lose one, you realize how important it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sisters and friends are tied together with heartstrings. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now go out and have more fun and don't come back until you do. Yeah.